Hi there, I'm Bonnie McCaffrey, and thank you so much for coming back this month for another vidcast. I'm here with Leslie Tucker Jennison, who is an artist. And how would you describe yourself as an artist? Well, I call myself a mixed media textile artist because although primarily I'm a quilt maker, I also do surface design on cloth and paper, which gets incorporated into my quilts. Yeah, you have so much wonderful texture. Tell thank me about you. this piece here. This piece is called Shreds of a Story. Well, wow, what's in here? Uh, lots of different things. The, yeah. the bottom fabric was actually a piece of spoon flower fabric that I that I made from a photograph. And then I took uh, shredded paper out of my paper shredder because I really like the way it looks and I fused it to the surface. And then I embellished over the top of that with some more pieces of the spoon flower cloth as well as some of this sari silk yarn. What did you use to fuse it? I use Misty Fuse. Misty Fuse. Oh, mm -hmm. I love Misty Fuse. I love, That's really, I love it too. It's, it's, it's my go-to product now for anything that requires fusing. Yeah. It's just, it doesn't change the hand of the fabric, but yet it obviously works well enough to fuse. Paper. It's a pretty stiff piece of paper because some yeah. of this is just old mail envelopes. I mean, it's not, yeah. it's, it's kind of, you know, it's the stuff you throw in the trash. So yeah. this piece is called Childhood Garden. And this is a piece that I've done a lot of memory pieces, uh, uh, a series called Heartland and this was probably the piece that triggered that series and it's it's really about some of my really vivid memories of childhood and we had a small garden in our backyard that we grew asparagus in in the early spring. Oh, this I little, see the asparagus. The, this little rumpled square here is actually a, a, a screen that I made of a drawing of a photograph of myself when I was a little yeah. kid. Yeah, and writing? Yes, that's some writing that I did again uh, doing with the sewing machine, writing with the sewing machine, some of wow. those memories of the garden. Beautiful colors. Thank beautiful you. Colors. Thank you. Now this piece over here, tell me about this That one. is the first in a series that I call in vitro. And this series started as a result of some friends of ours who were used in vitro uh, technology to conceive their first child. And so this was the jumping off point for that. And all that was hand dyed cotton. And then I printed also with textile paint. And I can't explain why it's the shape it is. It's a really odd, it's 28 inches wide and 104 inches long. Oh, I have no idea very why. Long. It's very crazy. Long. But anyway, yeah, I like yeah. it. And it's a piece that can hang both vertically and horizontally. Oh, so, isn't that neat? Yeah, it's now a you nice also piece. I brought some fabrics here. There are two pieces of silk broadcloth here, and these were done under the screen using thickened dye. And uh, this is actually an old Fiesta flag. I don't know if you've seen those, that they hang in kind of a banner style. Uh, I'm from San Antonio, and Fiesta is a big part of the culture of the city. And we had some of those flags, and I was looking at them thinking, you know. I think that'd be really cool under the screen. So that's what this is. Oh. And also, I took the floor mat and did some thickened dye, pulled it across with a foam brush, so I got that effect. With that underneath? Yes. Yeah. And then this one has a piece of, I used a piece of construction fence Let's under the silk over. screen. And it's both, uh, this this part is where the screen was under, the, the fencing was under the screen, and then this area right here was where the thickened dye remained on the piece of plastic, and I just took it and did a monoprint on top of okay. the silk. So. Which is what you're going to show us, right? Yes. You I'm going to show some monoprinting on a gelatin plate, which is a really cool and very simple way to do some of this kind of effect. Awesome. Well, we're going to set up, and we'll be right back so you can see how she does that. All right. We are ready to see how this works. Now, what do we need to get started? It's really very simple. Uh, before this product came out, and this is a new product on the market called a Jelly Arts Gel Printing Plate. It's a gelatin plate that is actually reusable. Yeah. Prior to this product being available, you made your gelatin plate out of gelatin, powdered gelatin and water, let it set up just like kids' Knox blocks, for lack of a better description. This makes it very easy to uh, just instantly get up and go and do your thing and really it doesn't take much else you really just need a brush or a brayer I have a foam brush here and these are just cheap brushes you can get at Home Depot or some home supply and a couple of different kinds of paint and what kind of paint you use doesn't matter in this case I've got textile paint but you don't have to have textile paint any any acrylic paint that has a little bit of a flow to it will work really well okay then the other thing I like is to have some materials to use to make a mark and I've got some really bizarre things here with me today I've got a piece of bubble wrap um, the bubble wrap is, you know, anybody can get that. If you get a shipment from UPS, you can get bubble wrap. Yeah, we um, all have bubble we wrap. We all have bubble wrap and then some. 
The other thing is, and this is this is weird. This is actually a piece of dry, uh, acrylic house paint that was dried in one of those <gasps> paint pans. Oh, that is so cool! And I thought, hey, you know. Oh my um, gosh! And here's what happens when you start making weird things. Your friends start giving you weird things. Okay, my friend <laughs> right, gave great. me. She goes, okay, I saw this in the pan and I thought of you. And I thought, <laughs> What does that say about me? But anyway, uh, so this makes an interesting mark. The other thing I really like are these uh, these plastic Empty. pill packets. Yeah. You know, chewing gum packets. This, this is a vitamin that I take. And I say, and I thought, hey, you know, that might work. Hey. So that's what we do. And it works, as I said, on cloth and paper. The other thing you can do is you can get commercial stamps. This mm -hmm. is a commercial stamp, and they work great on these. But you can also make your own stamps. And this is just one of those fun foam door knockers oh. with some of that uh, fun foam that has the the adhesive on the yeah, back. Yeah. Just cut it with a pair of scissors and you're ready to rock and roll. I mean, these work really well. Yeah. So there's a lot of ways you can make a mark. Yeah. So okay. what you do to get started is, and in this case, what I'm going to do just to be fun and crazy is I'm going to pour a little bit of paint from two different paint colors out on this, on this surface. And you can see the paint just sits there. This is one of the things that's great about this gelatin plate. The paint sits where you put it. And with oh. some surfaces that are used for monoprinting, the paint, because of the surface tension of the paint, it will begin to retract back onto itself. The thing that's great about this is where you put it is where it stays. And I love that about it. Oh, my gosh. So, and it's kind of fun. You can blend colors. You can use a brayer if you know it looks like kind of a... looks like Rubber a, roller. A roller. In this case, I'm just using this foam brush, and I'm going to get a little mark from the brush, but I don't mind that. I'm kind of, actually, I'm thinking yeah, right there we cool. could print. This is very, you absolutely could. But you can also put the surface of your tool onto the paint, and you, you sort of displace the paint, just wiggle it in place a little bit, and you get these marks. Uh-huh. And where that opens up, you're going to get that shape. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my cloth, in this case, I'm going to take cloth. I'm going to lay it down carefully, smooth it out, and I'm going to pick up the mark. So I'm going to put a little bit more paint on the surface, and I'm going to use something a little different. I think I'll use this weird paint thing. I just love that. So funky and cool. And again, you're going to get... The other thing I didn't say is that not only do you pick up this weird mark from the paint being displaced on the surface of this, but I've got the potential for using this as a stamp I as well. I was wondering yeah, about that. Exactly. Yeah. So now what I'm going to do is wiggle that around a little bit so I get the opening, put it aside. In this case, what I think I'm going to do is take, this is just a sale tag that I got at, you know, one of those office supply places. Right. And just like I use the cloth, I can use paper and I can pick oh. up the surface and then I can also come back. Bring it in here. Yeah. Okay, so I've got that, and then I'm going to use just another one. I'll lay it down on the surface just so you can see that I can use the same thing that I did the monoprint with, and I can get a stamp. So I could, in theory, come back over the top of things and have both the negative and positive space. Right. Which is really kind of cool. That is cool. So I like that about it. You can use all kinds of different paper and cloth to get these different so these marks. techniques that you're doing aren't just for cloth. They could be paper, they cloth, could, yes. whatever you feel like. And you, you can do it with any kind of paper. I like to tear magazine pages out and get pick up images. And then you've got that background that adds a little more textural uh, interest, I think. Yeah. And so there's just no end to the way you can use this. And you can also use commercial stamps, like I said. And you can get some really, really cool effects. Now you're doing a little wiggle. I am, because I, I want to I wanna really make sure the paint gets displaced. Because yes. when you create the opening, that's what gives you the mark. Exactly. So again, I've got the stamp, too. So I can take my cloth, pick up the mark. Sorry, it's a little awkward Ooh, we're going to get some that's interesting right. texture here. Yeah, it's going to be really, really cool. And again, you can see I'm just kind of smoothing it with my hand. So when I pick it up, I've got this really, really cool mark. Wow. And then the other thing I can do, because I have paint on this and I don't like to waste paint, is I can come back over with this and I can get a stamp. Yeah, I've got a variety of tools. I've got this. You is, do. These are those little weird things that you put in your garden hose. And you can see I really like that. I've got all kinds oh, of paint I on do. there. I do. I also like to carve my own stamps. These are just a bunch of acrylic erasers that I carved. And oh. then I stuck them to, this is a piece of scrap plastic. You can right. get this at any plastic supply place. And it's just not just dirt cheap. Yeah. But I like to have 
a series of them put together because again it adds a lot of textural interest this works really well as a monoprint and a stamp right here's some cloth that i did uh, Ooh, this printing is a neat on texture yes it is and this is just this is a lid a bottle lid i think it was a vitamin bottle kind of like this this works really well in the same way this does where Again, the monoprint is this fainter mark, and then the paint that was still on the surface, I came back on and printed. You so just have too much fun. I do. I have a yeah. lot of fun. This one is a chewing gum. This is the same thing as this vitamin, except this is just a chewing gum, a chewing gum thing. Yeah. Yeah. Here's another piece that is like uh, that cloth we were looking at earlier, which is a piece of construction fence. It was used under the silk screen with the fencing blocking where these openings are. That's where the fence was oh, okay. and the paint came through the right. screen. This is cool stuff. Now, do you have a book? I don't have a book out, but I do have a DVD. All right, so go. this was done this year with Interweave, and this is called DIY Surface Design. And some of the things I showed you with the jelly plate are in this. Yeah. yeah. Let me so. ask you a question. What is your philosophy of life? My philosophy of life is don't postpone joy. Don't postpone joy. Oh. Do it now. Do it now. Because this is an address rehearsal. So that's my philosophy. I love that. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing this. I think they're going to have a good time playing with their empty packages. <laughs> thank you very much for having me, Bonnie. I appreciate it. Good. And thank you all for coming. I do hope you'll come back next month to see what happened for you then. Thanks for being with me.